So you want to make Lime die, but you don't want to sacrifice efficiency or performance. Well, you're in the right place. A big problem I see with popular sea pickle farms is that they abuse laggy components like hopper minecarts and hoppers and just straight up spam redstone dust. If you want to know more about the negative effects of these components, click the video right here. And they often waste bone meal by not utilizing an optimal coral block placement and some just straight up don't have a collection system. Other than for bone meal feeding, this farm uses absolutely no hoppers or hopper minecarts and every single item is collected under here. The rates are absolutely incredible and it's a must have for lime dye production. So let's first talk about how sea pickles work. This spread can either happen on the same level as a sea pickle, but it can also happen one block below. And the max distance for the spread is actually two blocks, making this shape. So if I were to use bone meal on this sea pickle or use a dispenser, you can see very clearly that other sea pickles have spawned on other blocks. But if I were to reach out one extra block, you can see that no matter how much bone meal I use, there's still not going to be any pickles that spawn. And so since the collection system is located under the farm, the optimal way to break these pickles is to use pistons above and break them that way. If we actually dissect the farm, you can see that sea pickles appear to be finding their way simply using water. But how does that work? You see, back in 1.13 release in July 2018, which was the aquatic update, at the same time that they added sea pickles, they added the fact that when you drop items in stagnant water, they slowly but surely rise to the top. I believe they added this feature so when you die in the bottom in the ocean, you don't have to dive back down to go get your loot. But what that means for us is that we can drop items in there and then directly move them to a collection system just using water physics. And with the use of this feature, as soon as the pickles get broken, the pistons push them on the side, then they rise to the top and get collected by this second water stream which brings them over here and drops them in our water stream, which is our collection stream. Also, as a side note, since pistons break the water whenever they extend, I put water inside leaves under these coral blocks so they don't go dead. The delay is minimal, so I don't think they would actually die, but I just placed them to be sure and because I had the space. Now let's talk about an intriguing mechanic called Kazi connectivity. This very principle is the reason why this piston, even though it's not technically connected to any redstone, is still able to extend. Kazi connectivity, or QC for short, is a feature that you can find in pistons, droppers, and dispensers. The principle of it is that these components can be powered one extra block above, but still require an update to trigger. However, since this redstone block does not send an update, we need to do it manually. But why does that happen exactly? Well, you see, the redstone input for these things is actually the same as a door. So every way that you could power a door, you can also power a piston, which also applies with the top. But if you need an update to trigger, how could this piston possibly trigger? Well, it's simply because all these pistons are next to each other. So when one triggers, it causes an update to the next one, which continues the chain all the way to this one. So if you only place a block on this one, you can see that the whole chain activates and the same thing happens if you deactivate them. And again, this principle is not only for pistons, but also droppers and dispensers. So this is also where this unique feature comes in really handy because this specific orientation serves as bone meal input. And so we can directly power it through the hopper using Kazi connectivity. And so if I flick this lever, you can see that with this setup, this dispenser gets activated and both these pistons get activated too. The last thing is this comparator clock, which basically sends a signal which subtracts itself until it's at zero and then it does the cycle all over again. But the very neat thing about this is that we reuse this repeater with an observer that sends the signal into this block. And so there you go. With all these different simple mechanics, we have this apple shaped sea pickle farm that gives us more pickles that we'll ever need, uses max bone meal efficiency, and minimizes laggy components. As always, I'm going to leave the world download and the schematic in the description so you can see it for yourself. Oh, and one last thing. We just hit a thousand, boys! Woo!